So yesterday, someone pickpocketed my phone. Let's talk about it. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So yesterday, I was here, as we are, in Santiago, Chile, and uh, I was going out to a mall to buy this new shirt. Pretty nice, right? Anyway, I was at the mall, buying a shirt, and uh, I got complacent. So a lot of this, we're gonna say right now, was my fault, and I probably could have prevented it. And when you hear the story, maybe it'll give you a little lesson, in case you're ever in a similar situation, about how you could possibly prevent something like this yourself. So anyway, I was at a mall. The mall was right next to the Central Train Station in Santiago, Estación Central. And that, that area is like really, really heavily foot trafficked and also really notorious for pickpockets. So I should have been like much more alert than I was. That was my first mistake. Second mistake, was um, I could have there are two sides of the street well actually before I tell you that let me tell you how it happened I was walking along between the mall and the metro stop at the station that's like a block and a half it's a really short walk and there's a there's a lot of people along the street where I was walking lots of street vendors lots of people just sort of packed in tightly on the sidewalk and as I I was walking along, I felt something on the back of my head, and then a woman who was behind me, an older woman, like tapped me on the shoulder, and she told me, like, you have something in your hair. Now this is a classic pickpocketing scheme, which I actually already knew about. Like, I was cognizant of this as a pickpocketing scheme, but I just didn't, in the moment, put two and two together as to what was happening, and what happened was basically like as I was like trying checking to see if I had like bird shit on my head or whatnot, she did the same thing. Like she was checking herself, which of course put me at ease, thinking like, oh maybe the two of us, we both got something in our hair. And literally like I didn't notice I noticed like 30 seconds, within 30 seconds, that my phone was gone. And by the time I like looked around, she was gone and I'm sure my phone had just disappeared into the crowd. So there was no going, no getting that phone. There was no, I couldn't see who took it. I wasn't going to chase anybody down. Um, it was just, it was just done. My phone was gone. And one of the things that I did before I decided to take this trip, I mean, I'm going to be traveling long term um, in South America. One of the things I did was I purchased this phone specifically because it was an older phone. I bought it refurbished. It was cheap. Um, and I bought it specifically so that I could take it to, uh, you know, down here to, uh, with me. The whole point of it was I was going to, I wanted to make sure that if the phone gets stolen, the phone gets stolen and the phone's gone, right? Because pickpockets are all over the place. There's a chance that during this trip, at some point, my phone was going to get stolen. So I almost like prepared for the fact that it was going to happen. Um, and so I did a few things like precautionary to make sure that I could limit the damage if it actually did happen. One, I made sure I didn't have any like banking apps or like PayPal app or anything like that on the phone. I'm sure that's convenient, but um, it's also like dangerous if someone gets a hold of your phone, especially if they got in a situation where the phone was unlocked like I was using it and they grabbed it out of my hand while it was unlocked that's the worst case scenario because then they have access to all your accounts and everything and you definitely don't want that so I made sure that the phone was like relatively clean in that sense I also made sure that the phone had a long passcode and a fingerprint to you know open it so you couldn't unlock it and basically I just sort of relied on the fact that the phone was gonna be locked and like made sure that if someone did take it, 
that they would get the phone, yeah, but they wouldn't then like have access to do anything nefarious with like my accounts or any kind of like identity theft or anything like that. So right after my phone got taken and I realized it was gone, I immediately moved on in my head to like, all right, I need to get to an internet connection as fast as I can because I can like log in on the internet and I can, you know, remotely uh, factory reset the phone. And that was the whole point. I had already decided the phone was gone, it's a loss. I'm never gonna find it again. So we might as well just factory reset it. So, hopped on the metro, got back to the apartment. Within like 20 minutes, got on the internet. Uh, factory reset the phone from there. You know, logged out of uh, all sessions and everything and and uh, reset some passwords just to be safe. And that was, uh, I think, went like basically according to plan, how I had planned ahead for if something like this were to happen. And now the mistake that I was talking about before, sort of explain like exactly what happened was, at the metro, uh, in Estacion Central, there's two sides of the street and there's a metro entrance on both sides of the street. And the mall is on the side of the street that's like really, really busy with foot traffic and, um, and like uh, street vendors and stuff like that. Really crowded. The other side of the street is not crowded at all. And had I decided to go across the street, just take a little extra time, go across the street and enter the metro on the opposite side of the street, I wouldn't have had to walk through that whole crowd. And I think if I had done that, I probably wouldn't have gotten the phone stolen. A couple of the other things I did wrong, mistakes that I made, were actually things that I thought I was doing right, but I didn't like do them completely right, and so they ended up being mistakes. One was when I was in the store, I needed to check my phone. I was in the mall, and I did check my phone. Now, one of these, the reason why I say it was the right thing to do is because instead of checking your phone like out on the street where someone could theoretically like snatch it out of your hand, I checked it while I was inside the mall in the, uh, like, you know, inside, in a store, in a mall, something like that. And that's definitely what you should do. But my mistake was I did it kind of like out um, in like the open, an open area in the mall where a lot of people were watching me. And, uh, and then I just like immediately left the mall right afterwards. So theoretically someone could have clocked like where I, what pocket I had my phone in because they had watched me just pull it out and then put it, put it away and then walk right out of the mall. And they might have just followed me out of the mall, who knows. I don't know if that's actually what happened, but it's probably something that I should do differently in the future. The other thing was, I keep my phone in a zipped, zippered pocket. I bought pants that have uh, zippers on the pocket, specifically on like the front pockets. Um, and I do that because it makes it harder for someone to pickpocket you. But I now, thinking back on it now, I think after I checked my phone, I put it back in my pocket and I was kind of in a hurry and I wasn't thinking and I wasn't paying attention, I think I forgot to zip the pocket. So I had it in, uh, in a pocket, but it was not zippered. So I kind of made two mistakes there. Um, things that I had done specifically to try and prevent pickpocketing, but I didn't go 100% on them. And that kind of uh, messed me up. And I think that could have contributed to why uh, I ended up getting pickpocketed. And really that was just part that was all just part of me not paying attention to what was going on. I was in a hurry, I had other things on my mind, and uh, it was stupid because I knew I was in a place, an area where there was like probably a high risk of getting pickpocketed, but I just, uh, yeah, I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings, and normally I'm really good about that. For example, like right now, I'm sitting in a little cafe at the mall, but I'm sitting in the very, very back table uh, with my back to the wall so I can have my camera out here not a lot of people are gonna be able to like you know run by and swipe it um, also when whenever I go to like a new area of the neighborhood that I want to film or something like that I always take a look around first before I even take my camera out of my pocket so that like people like I can look and see I can like see if anybody's clocking me um, to see like if it if, if if I feel like it's safe to get the camera out and if I don't feel like it's safe then I won't take it out um, and actually in that neighborhood uh, that's very near the bus terminal where I mentioned the very first video here on a video crossing the Alps right when we got here that I didn't want to take my camera out in that neighborhood because I thought it was very sketchy so um, 
that like like I said, I think I think just being really aware of your surroundings and like taking a few moments to just like look around and see is anybody clocking you like pay close attention and really focus on the fact that like you're going to be going through an area where like you're likely to get pickpocketed so like take precautions one of the things that i think i would do in the future is just on that like walk of a block and a half between the mall to the metro i would have just kept my hand in my pocket holding my phone um and any you know make sure put all your valuables basically in like one pocket and keep your hand in that pocket because you know no one's gonna be able to pickpocket you that way so uh, but like i said i wasn't paying attention and that's my fault anyway we're here actually in a mall different mall because i don't want to tempt fate and we're here because there is a samsung store here where i can buy a new phone and there's also a claro store here where i can get a uh, sim card for that phone and I figured we'd go to one place and get all this done today. So let's head out and go get it done. All right, so here we are, the Samsung store. Let's go in and take a look and see if we can find a phone. Pretty cool store, actually. Anyway, we just got a phone. We're about to pay for it, and uh, then we're gonna head out of here. So, mission successful. So we got our new phone, mission accomplished. We got a new phone, it's all set up, ready to go. And uh, yeah, I think the lesson, the lessons to be learned here are to to do what I did right and don't do what I did wrong. So, how can you protect yourself and love minimize your risk from something like this happening to you? Well, do the things right that I did right. Basically, set up your phone to be as uh, disposable as possible basically as burnable as possible set up your phone with as, as few links to any of your secure information any of your important information banking stuff like that um, basically don't assume that if you're out here walking around that your phone is never going to get stolen in fact you should assume the opposite you should assume that your phone is probably going to get stolen and if that happens make sure that you're set up so that that's as far as it goes. If the worst thing that happens is you lose a phone, then that's the worst thing that happens. You don't lose access to your, you know, your bank account. You don't lose uh, a bunch of money because someone else gets access to your bank account. Be careful with that stuff. That's really, really important. Um, the other thing I would really suggest, you know, well, I know people like to buy the newest, most expensive blingy phone. But if you're going to be walking around somewhere where there's a likelihood that your phone's going to get uh, swiped, well, then maybe that's not such a good idea. I would say it's a bad thing to lose a $200 phone. It's a worse thing to lose a $1,200 phone. So definitely buy the phone that does the things that you need it to do, the bare minimum, and don't spend more than that. That would be my advice. The other thing I think you can do to uh, protect yourself or lower your risk is don't learn from the things I did wrong, right? When you're walking through uh, an area that is like high foot traffic, where there's a lot of tourists, where um, you're likely to get pickpocketed, be really cognizant. Be aware, don't be focusing on other things. Focus on looking at the crowd, looking for people who may look a little shady. If you feel really uh, like it's a real um, unsafe spot, don't go through there, walk on the other side of the street. Or when you're walking through there, keep your hand in your pocket and on your phone. It's going to be very hard for someone to pickpocket you if you're holding your phone in your pocket. Um, be very careful though with holding your phone out in the open because um, if someone swipes your phone, especially while it's unlocked, that's uh, a bad deal. And that's the thing that you want to prevent, I would say, uh, at all costs. Is you don't want someone to be able to have your phone unlocked. Um, so, like I mentioned before, I keep my phone locked most of the time with a eight, you know, like an eight-digit passcode, and um, it's 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 pretty secure. Someone being able to get into it if they were able to swipe it is is probably a very low chance that they're going to be able to get into it. Uh, one of the other things I do is I set my screen time out to 15 seconds, the sh the shortest time that it possibly can be, so that if someone does happen to swipe my phone out of my hand 
while um, while it's unlocked, it will lock itself within 15 seconds, and the chances of them being able to like, you know, do anything in my phone um, that's going to compromise, you know, my identity or anything like that, uh, they're not really going to be able to do that in 15 seconds. So, also keep your phone in a zipper pocket for sure, um, if you can, if it's if that's a possibility for you. If um, if you do that, make sure you zipper the pocket. Uh, because an unzipped zippered pocket is basically just like having a pocket with no zipper. Um, always keep your phone in your front pockets too. Um, never keep it in your back pocket. It's much easier for people to pick pockets something from your back pocket. And if you don't keep your phone in your pocket, say you keep it in a bag, a purse, a satchel, or carry-all, be careful with that too. Make sure that you're wearing something that is either like a fanny pack around your waist. If you wear that, Make sure you wear it in the front and not the back or the side. If you have a purse that you wear over your shoulder, make sure you wear it across your body and not just over one shoulder because chances are it could slip off your shoulder um, or it's easier for someone to grab it off your shoulder if it's not cross body. I definitely would not recommend something like a clutch or a carry-all that you just hold in your hand because that's basically just as bad as holding your phone in your hand out in the open. And always be really, really careful about where your bag is. Um, when you're sitting at a restaurant, don't leave your bag on the table, especially if it's a restaurant with outdoor seating where you're right there on the street. Don't put your bag around the back of your chair and hang it off the back of your chair while you're sitting there. And definitely 100% never like leave your bag unattended and go somewhere like to the bathroom and forget about it because that thing will be, will be gone. Like by the time you get back 100%, that thing will probably be gone. So just be really, really careful about that, especially with outdoor seating and when you're out on the street. In general, I would say be really careful about having your valuables out in a situation where anybody could just swipe it and then either disappear into a crowd or run off. Like you're standing on a curb, someone could come up on a motorcycle grab your, uh, you know, your whatnot out of your hand and take off, or you're standing in a subway train and you're right by the door and you have it in your hand. Someone could grab that and run off into the station, the door is closed, the train takes off, and now you're stuck. So be careful with those things as well. And um, just in general, I would say be, uh, be more aware than I was and be more focused on uh, on your own safety and the safety of your valuables more so than I was. Last point, is this whole experience going to like put me off or sour me about Chile or about the city of Santiago? No, it's definitely not. Because look, let's be honest, this could have happened anywhere. I was in Argentina for three months, three different cities, could have happened in any one of those cities. When I lived in the United States, I lived in a bunch of different cities. My car got broken into in one of those cities. I got my wallet stolen in one of those cities. These things happen. And things like this, they're gonna happen. Bad days, good days. And you can't let it, um, you can't let it sour your experience, I don't think. So, Santiago, yes, this is the city where someone stole my cell phone. And it's always gonna be the city where someone stole my cell phone but it's also the city where I've been able to experience a lot of really cool stuff. I've ate delicious food. I've met a lot of cool people. I've done a bunch of uh, like, uh, like thing, really enjoyable things here. You know, I've, I've, I've enjoyed the city so far and this one incident is not gonna change that. It's definitely not gonna change that. But what it is gonna change is how like I act in certain situations and in certain areas of the city, not just this city, but other cities, moving forward. It's gonna make me uh, think a lot harder about how I can make sure to keep myself safe and my valuables and whatnot safe while I'm walking around the city doing this. Because, you know, I do have a bit of a target uh, on myself. Like one of the advice that people give about how to like prevent getting stuff stolen from you and how to prevent getting pickpocketed is it's like not mark yourself as a tourist well that doesn't apply to me there i can't do that because i'm always walking around talking in english into a camera so so basically 
So basically, people are always going to know that I'm a tourist. And there's not going to be any. Uh, there's not going to be any question about that. And the trade-off, of course, is to not make these videos, and I'm not going to do that. I want to keep making these videos, which means I'm going to have to keep walking around with the big sign over my head that says, "Hey, this guy's a tourist." So. I guess that's about it for this video. I don't really know what else to say other than uh, this was an impromptu video. I definitely didn't plan to make this one, but now that I have, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and I hope you come back to watch more videos in the future. See you later.